Okay, so this is going to be the second and probably the last honors topic that we're going to do for chapter one for algebra two. This is going to deal with two things. The first thing is um, we are going to be simplifying radicals. Okay. You can barely see that. Okay. Oh, I left the wrong line on. Okay. So in simplifying radicals, basically, generally when we talk radicals, it's something um, that comes out nice and clean and whole with a square root. Okay, so a radical is that square root symbol, um, but we don't like to call it just a square. It's a radical because if you have cube roots, square roots, fourth roots, tenth roots, x roots, and so on. So when we're talking um, just about what this little symbol looks like, we call that a radical. So generally we see things in the form like, oh, we want um, the square root of 25, Congrats, that's a nice, clean, whole number of five. So we're going to deal with things that are different than that. Things that don't come out so cleanly. Okay, for the first example, um, let's deal with the square root of 18. Okay, so you can test this in your calculators. You can say it in your own head that you know. There's no clean, whole number, square root of 18. It'd be some long, nasty decimal that we don't want to have to deal with. So in other times, we just say, okay, let's clean this up. Let's simplify it a little bit. We want to see how much of this can we take out and then how much has to be left in. So basically, when we do this process, we like it to be a number that ends up kind of being squared times some other number. We'll just call that B. Okay? So... To me, it truly doesn't matter how you figure this out. Um, another way of thinking about this is that you just want to find two numbers that multiply together so that you can separate this root and one of them ends up becoming a nice, even clean square root and then the other will just stay in that square root. So kind of two different thought processes behind this. Whatever helps you think about this better, though, is how I would suggest you do it. So dealing with the square root of 18, what I want to do is think about what are factors of 18 in which one of those factors does have a clean, even square root, okay? So the first one that comes to mind for me is 2 and 9, right? 2 times 9 gives me 18. So I'm going to separate this inside here with the product in here of 9 times 2, okay? So what happens with this radical? We can split it up through division, okay? So you can split radicals up through division or division and multiplication. I'm going to say multiplication the first time though. So I can split this up because it means the same thing. If I multiply two things inside of a square root and then, and then take the square root of it, versus square rooting them and then multiplying them. Those are communicative and they can, um, they will equal the same thing. So this saying the square root of nine times two is equivalent to the statement, the square root of nine times the square root of two. So um, from this point, now, how can I simplify this down? The whole point of this was I wanted to simplify this radical. We know the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, so we got something out of there. And then what was left in was the square root of 2. And I can't break down that square root of 2 any further. Um, another way that I want you to think about this, and if you would have had Mr. Gale, this was like his famous line, um, when he taught simplifying square roots or radicals, he would go this direction instead, and he'd say, find two numbers that multiply together that are the same, multiplied by a different third number to equal this number. So those three numbers would have been three times three times two, right? That's the exact same thing as saying 
the square root of nine times two. It's just breaking it up that one step. So what he liked to say was you had like three little soldiers or something like that, and they got under ambush. And out of the two that are the same, one escapes, one dies, and then the odd one out stayed your prisoner, thus being three root two. Whatever helps you to be able to think about this, feel free. It doesn't matter to me. But that's, just, that's the process of this, okay? So we're going to try another one. A lot of people say, like, well, is there one right way to go about this? The only wrong way is leaving something in a square root that could be broken down more. That's the only wrong way to do this. Um, let's do root 72. Okay, so when I'm thinking about the, about the square root of 72, um, I can think about this in two different ways. So I think the way that I want you to think about this is truly trying to pull out that big hole, because you know what those perfect squares are, things like 25, 36, 49, 64, 4 is 1, 9 is 1. 16, all of those even squares, that's what I want you to start thinking about. So looking at 72, my first thing might be to see, okay, well, can I divide it by something like 4 or 9 or 16 or 25 or 36, right? Go through all of those perfect squares. If you get something out that's a clean number, the answer is yes. That's something you could use to simplify this. So my first thing was I started going through and doing that. What I got was this can evenly be divided by 36. When doing so, I got the answer of 2. Okay, so 36 times 2 gives me 72. I did that because I know 36 it has a clean um, whole number square root. So I can break this up. Square root of 36, square root of 2. Square root of 36 is 6 times square root of 2. Okay? So your like always one of your last checks needs to be, is what's in my square root done? Do I need to go further? Is there anything that I can break this up by in order to keep going? Like if I had a 4 in here, keep going. Or if you had a 12 in there, keep going. Okay? If you have larger numbers, you're going to want to make sure that there is no possible way that you can continue to break down this square root or radical in any form. Um, so that is simplifying radicals. Um, another thing that we want to do is rationalizing the denominator. So when we're dealing with rationalizing the denominator, this is basically saying that when we're going through a problem, we end up with a radical in our denominator. So at no point in time do we ever want to see a square root, a cube root, a fourth root, any kind of radical or root in a denominator. It's a no-go. You have to get it up. So you can kind of work with it down there until the very end, and then you start to simplify and you have to remove it. So there's this, this process you have to take to remove it. Um, there's longer, lengthier processes. We're gonna go through the most simplified version that you're gonna see, so we're not gonna get into like the really big, heavy rationalizing. Um, so I want us to rationalize the following. We're going to take the square root of 5 over 2, okay? And this is all in a fraction. 
So the first thing I want you to recognize, just like we did with multiplication, you can break up a radical through division, just like we did that multiplication. So this statement, this expression is equivalent to taking the square root of 5 and dividing it by the square root of 2. Okay. Now there's a reason I'm doing this. I cannot do anything with this right here. It's as simplified as possible. I can't break down a 5 to simplify that at all, and I can't break down a 2 in order to simplify that at all. Also, neither of these are a clean whole number square root. So then my next process is just, okay, well, I can't have a square root or a radical in my denominator. So the, last, the only thing I have to do to clean this up is to get the radical out of my denominator. First step in doing that is breaking up this division with those two separate radicals because I have to have the radicals separate in order to rationalize. So the process of rationalizing is you take it multiplied by a fraction, okay? And whatever was in your denominator becomes both the numerator and the denominator of this new fraction that we're multiplying by. The thought process behind this is that you're not changing the value at all because root two over root two essentially equals one. So you're just multiplying by a pretty funny looking one is what I always like to say. Like when we are when we go through this process later in the year and I say, well, how do we rationalize a denominator? And everyone's like, well, you multiply by that funny looking one because it always looks different every time. But it will always be equal to one. So when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across, okay? If something is in the same kind of root, meaning this is both a square root, I can multiply their insides and leave them under that root, their radical. Okay, so 5 times 2 is 10. So now I have the square root of 10. Similarly for the denominator, same roots, I can multiply their insides. That gives me the square root of 4. Okay, so hopefully now you see like, oh... That's what happens. You multiply them by each other to get this even clean square root, right? Because we know the square root of 4 is 2. So now my last check is, okay, well, my radical's out of my denominator, but I messed with my top a little bit. So now, can I simplify the square root of 10 at all? Really, the only factors of that are going to be 5 and 2 or 1 and 10. Neither of those can be split up at all. I can't simplify that down any further. So this would be my final answer. But that's that biggest check is you constantly have to say, okay, now I've changed it. Can I simplify more? Okay, now I've done this. So now can I simplify more? Um, but you will end up at a point where you just simply can't go any further. So I'm going to do one more example. If you would rather not listen, that's okay with me. It doesn't matter whatever you need for you. So this example is just one second. Okay, let's do root 2 over 15. Okay, so again, I'm going to go right away and split up this division by taking the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. Okay, again, two equivalent expressions here. I didn't change the value at all. Now, I don't have any way of breaking down that square root of 2 anymore, and I also have no way of breaking down the square root of 15. So my next step is truly just rationalizing. I have to multiply by root 15 over root 15, because that's what's in my denominator. Okay, multiply straight across. This becomes root 30 over um, 
basically I'm going to start, start skipping steps here so that you don't get these massive large numbers. I know right away, well, what's going to happen? Square root times the square root, those roots are going to cancel, and I'm just going to be left with what's on the inside, 15. So I can't do anything further with this, so that would be my final answer there. Okay, so those are the two different um, other honors, kind of little mini topics that will be on Chapter 1 tests. So let me know if you have any questions, um, and I suggest trying some of the problems in the book.